How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is volume 3A on lipids. Let's get straight into the video. So, volume 3A lipids, we discuss what is a lipid, we look at triglyceride and phospholipid formation, and then we have a discussion on steroids. Option B3 on lipids, there's a number of IB understandings and applications, just make sure you have a read through of them through them, understand what you need to know, and then we'll focus on the applications and skills again. Okay, oils and fats are a class of molecules called lipids. Fats and oils are triglycerides, while other members, including phospholipids and ster steroids, have different structures from triglycerides. Lipids are based mainly on carbon and hydrogen, but they also contain small amounts of oxygen and sometimes other elements. Most lipids are essentially non-polar and they're not soluble in water. The first one we have there is a free fatty acid. That is, it has a long hydrocarbon tail and then the head of that molecule is a carboxylic acid group. We have a triglyceride underneath, which is three fatty acid molecules attached to a glycerol. And a phospholipid has a similar structure to a triglyceride, except one of the locations of the bond has been replaced by a phosphate group. Fats and oils are formed by a condensation reaction between a single molecule of glycerol and three molecules of fatty acids. So here we have a molecule of glycerol on the left, and on the right we have three steric acid molecules, three fatty acid molecules. Now when these two things react in a hydrolysis react in a condensation reaction, we eliminate water from the link between these two molecules. So water is lost, and what happens is we form an ester link between those two molecules. So what happens is we have our glycerol backbone, and then we are linking the two molecules with an ester link. So there's an ester link between the glycerol and the fatty acid, and then we can just represent the rest of the fatty acid in um, that simple notation. We don't need to draw it out. It's a good idea to draw the ester link, the, the OC double bond O link, that shows that you understand the structure, and that also provides you with some information about the type of molecule that you have formed. At the end, don't forget to balance with three water molecules because three water molecules have been formed. In this process, we form a molecule called a triglyceride. They are large, they are non-polar, and they're insoluble in aqueous solutions. We will describe that as being a fat, and fats yield more energy per gram than carbohydrates and proteins. That's because the carbons are more reduced which means there's less connections to more electronegative elements. There's more carbon to hydrogen bonds. So a saturated fat or a saturated fatty acid contains only single carbon to carbon bonds. Generally, they're solids at room temperature and they compact together quite tightly because they're rod shaped. You can find all the information about these fatty acids in the data book. So make sure you look them up if they're talking about um, fats and saturated fatty acids. The general formula for a saturated fat is CnH2n plus 1 C double OH and there's no carbon to carbon double bonds in the chain. A monounsaturated fat such as oleic acid which can be found in peanut butter has one carbon to carbon double bond and that gives the molecule a bit of a kink, it's a little bit offset. The general formula is CnH2n minus 1 C double OH. For every double bond, you lose two hydrogens. So it's easy to remember the saturated ones and then just apply that rule for the unsaturated. Generally, these are liquids at room temperature because when they're offset by each other, they can't pack as closely together. A polyunsaturated fat, such as linoleic oil, that contains more than one carbon to carbon double bond. And you can work out how many double bonds by looking at a saturated fat and then working out how many hydrogens it's missing. Remember, for every double bond, that's two hydrogens. A phospholipid is similar to a triglyceride in that they're derivatives of triglycerides. 
Now, a phospholipid has two fatty acids condensed onto the glycerol molecule, but the third and final position is occupied by a phosphate group. So there's a phosphate group attached to one of the carbons in the, in the glycerol. Phospholipids are characterized as having a polar or hydrophilic head and two nonpolar hydrophobic tails. Hydrophilic means attracted to water, hydrophobic means not attracted. As a result, this gives what we call a bilayer. So if we have a sample of a phospholipid in water, the nonpolar tails will all clump together. The hydrophilic heads will be on the outside and we form what's called a bilayer, which enables membranes to allow things to pass in and out of a structure. So for chemists though, we need to just talk about the nonpolar tail and the polar head, which provides the basis for membrane structures, which is more of a biology concept. Okay, so triglycerides and phospholipids are broken down in hydrolysis reactions to yield, the, to yield their component molecules. This reaction can occur in a biological system where we would have a catalyst that completes the breakdown, or we can also do it in the lab using acidic or alkaline solutions. So the first one we'll look at is enzyme catalyzed hydrolysis, where we have our fat, our triglyceride, and then the enzyme will come in and cut the middle of the functional group. So the ester functional group will be cut and then water will be added and what we yield is glycerol and three fatty acid molecules. So our glycerol, that had the hydroxide functional group. So the hydrogen from the water will return with that hydroxide functional group. So here we have our glycerol with its three OHs. And then the fatty acid it was originally an acid, so it will now receive its OH back from the water, making it an acid, and then we have its hydrocarbon tail stuck on the end. Again, won't need to draw that out, just simply writing the semi-structure is fine. We can also have the same procedure undergoing in a laboratory setting. So if we have a alkaline solution, for instance KOH, we could mix the triglyceride with some hydroxide and we will form our glycerol and our three fatty acids. I've used a different representation here for glycerol because I'm not sure how they'll give it to you, but that is the same as the glycerol. And then we could write the fat that's produced in semi-structure as well. There'll be three of those fats produced and there'll be no water because the water has gone into breaking the link. Okay, steroids. Steroids are described as a lipid with a structure consisting of four fused rings known as a steroid or steroidal back backbone. Cholesterol is one of the most important steroids because it's a precursor in many, many biomolecules. I've highlighted the steroid backbone, which is also the backbone for a number of different molecules that are formed in the body. The structure of cholesterol, you don't have to remember it, it's on page 37 of the data book. So here we have testosterone, which has the same kind of structure, the same steroid backbone as cholesterol. Vitamin D, again similar, except one of the links has been broken. And then we've got cortisone as well, the same sort of form fused ring structure. If you have a look at these three different molecules, you'll notice that they're largely nonpolar. That is, they only have dispersion force kind of interactions or very weak um, iron dipole interactions. So most of these compounds you would say are not soluble in water and that they're stored in the fat in the body. Testosterone, well, it's got the ketone functional group, vitamin D, it's got an alcohol functional group, and cortisone has a combination of ketone functional groups and alcohol functional groups. Okay, what is the function of the lipids in the body? Well, lipids contain stored energy that is released when they're broken down in cellular respiration. 
Lipids release more energy per gram and are more reduced than carbohydrates and therefore can undergo a greater amount of oxidation. Fat stores in animals are called adipose tissue and it acts as a reserve of energy. In plants, essential oils are sometimes used as an energy store. We use fat to protect some of our vital organs and also to act as a thermal insulator. Lipids can also act as transport of water insoluble, insoluble vitamins, such as vitamin D. Okay, some top tips for 3A. Formation and hydrolysis. Make sure you understand how the fats are formed and also how they're broken down, and you don't need to draw all the points. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.